Hi divers, welcome back on my channel. Today I do a complete unboxing of the salted line underwater housing for the Sony A6400 coming up. Well, I did not do any reviews of underwater photo camera stuff, videography uh, things for a very long time and I felt that it is time to do another uh, review. And uh, sure, I love my Insta360 uh, camera and I use it a lot underwater. I use it during classes. I use it uh, sometimes even on normal dives just uh, to just point and shoot things, uh, document stuff for project baseline, for instance, things like that. And it's a great camera, it's a very small form factor, and uh, I really like it. And you can like use uh, something like a GoPro or a Paralens or whatever camera uh, that is a small diving camera um, you, you like, and they are doing a really, really, really good job. These cameras are amazing. Still, uh, if you if you go for real serious underwater photography or you're shooting documentaries, uh, you sometimes feel that these small cameras are in some terms limited, and you you need something better. And of course, if you're using a better camera, a bigger camera, uh, that usually means that bigger cameras have bigger sensors and that means more light can come in and in terms of light sensitivity and stuff like that they do a way better job. The problem is such such cameras are just not built for out of water operation. So what you mostly need or not mostly what you almost no what you all the time every time need is underwater housing and the problem with underwater housings is that they are sometimes even more expensive way more expensive than the entire camera system let's say just for me uh, the camera I use most of the time so I own a Sony a6000 and the a6400 and my main camera for underwater uh, shooting is the a6400 and um, you can easily get the 6400 for around let's say a thousand bucks plus maybe a little bit for the glass so let's say one and a half thousand uh, euros or dollars doesn't really matter uh, this is the price range you can get your hands on the Sony a6400 if you want to go a little bit higher uh, for like cameras like the a6600 or you want to uh, go for the full-frame cameras like the a7 um, different versions uh, it's a little bit more expensive still the underwater housing, and there are numerous uh, manufacturers of them, they start at, I would say, one and a half thousand. You need uh, the camera housing and you need the part and stuff like that. So you spend at least two thousand. Um, most of the times, I think you go over three thousand bucks for the underwater housing. So it uh, exceeds the price of uh, the camera itself by, by multitudes. I uh, came accidentally across, on YouTube actually, across a underwater housing from Salted Line. And finally, it, whoa, it arrived yesterday. And uh, yeah, so let's do some very nice unboxing. So I got the uh, two packages, this one and I got myself the white dome port. It's uh, yeah, a dome port. Uh, for many reasons, uh, dome ports uh, are necessary in underwater photography. So first of all, let's put that aside and go with the uh, camera housing itself. So what we have here inside, uh, what comes out? First of all, uh, the user manual, 
Uh, you get a user manual in. Uh, oh yeah, well yeah. I think it's in Chinese, and uh, on the other side it's in English. Then we have some anti fog sheet things. Uh, I know that from my Insta360 uh, and from other camera housings. So these are more like uh, pads and they um, they uh, reduce the humidity of the air in the camera housing. So uh, the the lens itself or, or the glass in front uh, should not uh, fog so fast if you use these guys. So there's a spare spring for latch, something like that. So there are small, two small springs. And actually, I don't know what this is used for, but as it said, it's a spare spring for a latch. I think these springs are attached to a latch. I don't know. Next, you get some silicon grease. And let's just open it and have a look what's in there. This is a Okay, there's something. Ah, okay, this seems to be a remover for um, for this for the seat for the O-ring. So maybe you have maybe you can see it. So maybe you can remove the O-ring uh, or the ceiling from the from the camera housing later. I don't really know, but better to keep this. Uh, away from dirt and dust and stuff like that. So I do everything, put everything in. There's another uh, thingy, looks like a coin, but it's made of plastic. And uh, I, I don't know if you can see it, but it shows that you can unscrew something with it. So I, I put that just back in. I will see later what this might be for. So then we have a cloth or something to, you know, like wipe the lens. So next, I ordered this. You can get it with it or without it, and I'm pretty sure that this should be the vacuum testing, which is really hard to open actually. Yes. So this is a vacuum testing pump, whatever you call it. So you can. Um, you can uh, suck air uh, from the from the housing after it's closed, and this thing can be applied, and it shows if the uh, the housing is leaking somewhere. So before you go diving, you can just use that and leave it for maybe there's a manual, a small manual, uh, and maybe you leave it for like 50 minutes or something like that, and there's a green or red LED and it shows if uh, if the housing is leaking or not. So uh, just let's go on. This is I think a neoprene cover uh, and I think it's for the dome port. Yeah this seems to be a cover for the dome port because the dome port can easily get scratched and I ordered this additionally. So, some small packages. Ah, okay. Uh, the clamps for, for the arms. I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. So there are clamps for, uh, for the arms of the housing. I ordered along with uh, the housing, I ordered um, an aluminum tray to really hold it tight because I did not want to uh, unscrew the tray from my actual housing. Um, so this is why I just ordered a new one. So the whole package is something I ordered uh, with the uh, ambitious Dewey diver in mind who starts to go for underwater photography. And I thought to myself, okay, what would somebody like me who just got his first camera uh, neat. So this is why I ordered the whole pack. Although I have plenty of these guys uh, in my garage and they are pretty much lying everywhere. So that's another of these ball head clamps. Uh, four of them. So next one is 
another neoprene cover. And maybe this is for um, the standard port. So I have the dome port and the standard port. There's another neoprene cover. We'll later see what these guys are for. So now what do we have here? This is a cold shoe adapter. Uh, for it's made completely of aluminum, so it's it's not plastic, which I really like. Oh, I thought it would be made of plastic, but it's completely made of aluminum. I think it's aluminum or some other metal, but I think it's aluminum. So uh, the screw and uh, the screw and uh, and the thing itself is made of aluminum, and you can just use that on the cold shoe of the housing so you can just put a camera like the Insta360 or any other uh, action cam uh, can just put it on top of the housing so if you go for uh, for pictures for photos uh, you can just have the, the small camera in video mode and maybe you catch something on video uh, what, what's worth catching or worth shooting uh, so this is why I ordered this so I can have both cameras like on one tray on, in, in one rig something like that there's a lot of plastic actually and I uh, I don't really uh, like all these plastic packages uh, because for uh, sustainability, environmental reasons. Still, I, th I know that they have to uh, wrap everything up somehow. So this seems to be a focus ring. So depending on the lens you use, uh, you need, maybe we we'll see that later, you need a focus ring uh, that is attached to the lens and uh, you can from the outside use that to uh, focus or zoom uh, your lens, depending on the lens. So now we finally, after all these accessories, we finally come to the, oh no, stop. There's something else. I think this is, okay. This is the replacement. This is a kit for the A6000. So that means I think uh, my housing is now uh, prepared for the A6400 and because of a slightly different form factor you need uh, this uh, thing for the A6000 to um, use different camera models for the, for the housing which is still great that you can use uh, different camera models or slightly different camera models with this housing. So now this is empty Put that aside, and here is the camera housing. Everything out. I like that it's that it's packaged, so you don't get any scratches uh, on this. And as you can see, this is this is the housing itself. So you can see you have. Uh, a lot of functions before you open it you get some tips so what, what we have here we have here one knob for the one of these the c1 knobs another c1 and c2 i think they have two c1 knobs uh, because uh, the different camera models a6000 6300 500 400 the number of uh, of these um, knobs of these switches is different so they have for the different camera models different uh, knobs then you have some dials where you can maybe use yeah use the dials on top of your camera for uh, for the aperture and, and the shutter time and stuff like that on the back you have uh, a, a nice viewfinder yeah, it's not too bad. You can really, I think in the end, you can really see uh, through the viewfinder. Still, it's a little bit crappy to go uh, taking pictures underwater uh, using the viewfinder like that because you have your mask in your face and you won't see much, I think. So normally for underwater uh, use, or I, at least I do, I use just the monitor. I don't use the viewfinder because it's, it's not really 
yeah, the, the viewfinder is not really, really uh, good for taking pictures underwater. Yeah, on the back side you have all the functions the i6400 at least has, I think the other cameras too. So uh, you have this switch for the autofocus, manual focus, um, yeah, uh, you can use on the camera. Uh, you have all the other uh, knobs, these um, buttons on the cross. Um, there's another dial. Uh, this is the small dial I think you have on the back uh, of the camera. Uh, you can use to dial through um, through the menu and stuff like that. And uh, the trash can and um, replay button, stuff like that. So you have all the functions uh, you have on land with that housing and this is really great uh, because with most at least cheap housings you don't have access to all the functions so I really like that. So now we can open the... just use that, I don't want to scratch the lens. We can open, uh, open the housing. You see you have uh, two buckles on or one on on each side and uh, there I think they don't uh, they can open accidentally on a water uh, I don't think that this happens so now we can open it okay so there's one of the seals pre-installed, one is here, one is here. Uh, just to give a side note, the entire housing is made of uh, polycarbonate. I think most of the housings are made from polycarbonate anyway. Uh, housings like the Fantasy, um, I think this is maybe only uh, Naughty Cam is making aluminum housings. Maybe Isata is making aluminum housings. Um, if you if you know who else is making uh, like polycarbonate and aluminum housings, you can just leave me a comment. Polycarbonate is not, um, frankly, not the best material I think for underwater housing uh, because of the thermal conductivity of polycarbonate. So. Um, the thermal conductivity of the optical glass in the front is higher than of the polycarbonate and that means that moisture inside the housing uh, it might condense and uh, in polycarbonate housings no, most of the times um, the glass fogs easier than in aluminum housings. So what we have here inside is another focus ring that says 10 to 18 millimeter and the other focus ring has 16 to 50 millimeter. I think this is for the different uh, lenses you can use with the with this housing. Uh, there is a complete list of uh, lenses you can use and I just link that list in the video description. From first look it looks sturdy, it looks really really nicely made. Uh, after the unboxing I really take this guy out for testing and I really take this guy uh, up in deeper waters, in caves and stuff like that and really uh, let you know how this underwater housing performs in rough uh, conditions GUE divers usually have. So this is in the first package, uh, very nicely packed, nothing is scratched, it's in perfect condition. Uh, I really like how they made this housing, how they packed everything, how they shipped everything. Just a side note, uh, it took them three or four days to ship everything. Well, now let's come to the second package, the, ooh, the glass, uh, dome port. No, it's not glass actually, it's the polycarbonate dome port. I actually wanted to have the glass dome port, however, the glass dome port was not available. Um, they have it available in like June or July, so they are all sold out. So I uh, I got the polycarbonate dome port, and I will get a glass dome port 
uh, in summer uh, once they are available. And then I make a comparison uh, about a glass dome port versus a polycarbonate uh, dome port. And yeah, this is uh, something uh, you can yeah you can wait for in the future. So this video is coming and. Uh, once again, if you don't want to miss this video, um, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. So, what we have here is again, uh, silicon grease seal and a cloth to, to wipe the, the dome port. The user manual, like in the other package. Then we have the anti-fog sheet uh, again. It's uh, yeah the same. So and here comes the dome port. So this is it. Uh, so we remove that. Uh, so this is it. This is the six-inch dome port. They have a smaller one, a four-inch dome port, and they have a bigger one, the eight-inch dome port. And I opted for the six inch dome part mainly because um, I can use my 16 millimeter Sigma lens with it and uh, I, I didn't really want to have such a big one because I'm very often diving with scooter with uh, uh, stages stuff like that uh, sometimes uh, especially when it comes to uh, some kind of scientific diving projects documentation stuff um, I'm, I sometimes have multiple cameras and stuff like that, uh, so I didn't want to have another really big dome port, so I uh, I opted for the yeah the one in the middle. And there's an important notice: uh, it can be scratched easily, so handle with care. That's why I, as I said before, bought the neoprene cover for the dome port. And you can just apply that over the dome port. And that's important because I uh, very often I have, especially if, if we're going and scootering somewhere, I have the camera uh, hanging just on my side because I'm on the scooter and I have, have the camera on the side and it might just dangle somewhere around and uh, hit like stages on the side stuff like that and this is why a neoprene cover uh, it's it's some sort of a bumper and it helps not to scratch the surface because if the surface is scratched you will see it in your photos and your videos and you if you scratch it you can basically just throw it away there's still one seal and it's very well greased with the silicon uh, silicon grease uh, and this fits just on the camera we can show later how you can um, apply the, the the dome port now what else do we have in the package we have oh yeah these are uh, the, the handles for the tray so nice grip the tray is made of aluminum but uh, it's a rubber grip and it's it really feels nice but I have to see how it works with like gloves or dry gloves uh, because it fits my hand now very well but maybe with dry gloves it might be a little bit too small I don't know. so this is the grip for the other side this is the aluminum the tray itself I think you have a key and the hex key and some screws to screw everything together so yeah there's an assembly scheme so in case you don't know how you should assemble everything now another um, another uh, arm for my lights these arms are uh, buoyant so they swim so if you have the heavy camera uh, you can install everything and you have these arms like swimming so uh, you can really um, adjust the uh, the weight of the uh, not really the weight but uh, the buoyancy of the camera housing including the camera you can really adjust that and that's very important because you don't want the camera to like very falling down or swimming up swimming up is even a little bit more annoying I think uh, at least underwater and so these guys are uh, to adjust that so let's shortly assemble this
So yeah, that looks good, looks very sturdy, but feels really great in your hands. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, the tray itself seems to be a bit narrow here, because I can easily grab it. But with my dry gloves, I'm not sure if it's so easy to grab it um, thoroughly, and I'm not quite sure if that works really, really well. Maybe I can adjust it a bit, but then it's it's harder to reach the other side. Um, I uh, once I I put that on the water, I will. Maybe I, I make a review about that because now if I'm grabbing it here, let's see if I'm grabbing it, this uh, this dial here blocks my thumb from going in between. So this is where my thumb would go and it's that's really hard to do. So uh, it's, if, I'm, if I'm moving the housing to the other side, then it will be too narrow on this side. So this is really narrow and I'm not quite sure if I can really use that underwear. What I like is that it is that it is so small, so I can easily just have it uh, on my gear, just clip it to my, my, my chest ring and I have it hanging here and it's so small, that's very really nice, but if I cannot really use it, I don't know, maybe I use my old uh, tray um, because that's a little bit wider uh, and I think I can use it so that this might make more sense I'm not sure we, we will see and what I what I don't really like what I really uh, if I try to open uh, the housing I cannot really do it you see this can no nah, it's not really going open so uh, the tray is so small that you cannot really open open it. Maybe you see it in this camera here. You see it's uh, it's hitting, the lock is hitting the tray and I cannot really open the camera. This is really not well designed quite frankly. Um, yeah, if you, if you cannot really open the latch then you always have to, you have to remove uh, the tray from the housing and then you can open it and, and use it. So this is something I don't really like. So and if you want to change the uh, flat port for the uh, dome port, you first open open everything. You can just unscrew with a screwdriver here. Uh, I took out this small plastic thing. Yeah, this comes off. Okay. And now to secure everything, you need that small plastic thingy. Don't lose the screw and scratch the dome port uh, from the inside. That's very important. And now I have... the camera with the dome port installed. Yeah, very nice. The first look at... Uh, really nicely made. It's sturdy. Uh, it's made of polycarbonate, okay, but still, it's it looks like being uh, very, very well made. So let's talk about the specs of this uh, of this housing. Uh, no, first, let's let's uh, clean up a little bit here. So let's talk about the specs of the housing um, with the flat part. The housing has an operational depth of 60 meters, which should be okay for most of the divers. With the dome part, uh, it has only 40 meters, which is for most recreational divers uh, okay, but for technical divers, 40 meters is um, maybe a little bit too shallow. So I don't know if they have another dome port. Uh, that can go deeper, but I don't think so. I think uh, they all go up to 40 meters only. Uh, still, if you go deeper, up to 60, you can at any time use uh, use the flat port. It's not so nice to have not the wide angle view, but still you can use it. 
the weight of the housing is very okay, it's a polycarbonate so it's not so heavy and the specification in the manual it says uh, that it has, uh, the housing itself has a weight of uh, 1056 grams or one kilo roughly and the dome part is 460 gram so the entire housing has um, roughly one and a half kilo um, which is not too heavy and I think underwater we have to check it but underwater I think it will be pretty buoyant because of the of the large volume of the dome port at least maybe not with the flat port but with the dome port it uh, will be uh, positively buoyant I think but I, I have to check this so I'm doing a complete in water review with this uh, housing for sure so let's talk about the price I said it's a very very inexpensive uh, housing so I bought the entire housing for 1100 euros um, including the the polycarbonate dome port um, the the housing itself the flat dome port that came with the housing and uh, the tray uh, the buoyant arms uh, the focus rings some neoprene covers uh, and very important I think it's very important the vacuum testing pump because I really would like to have this uh, piece in mind uh, that I can just pump my housing before and see if it's really watertight. We really need to see if it's doing a great job or if it's failing. What I saw from other uh, YouTube videos about the housing, it's doing um, doing a really, really, really great job and many people are really uh, convinced that the uh, solid line um, camera housing with, with the dome port is really a great thing uh, but sure I will test it in terms of technical diving so how can a GOE diver or a GOE minded diver or a technical diver a cave diver make use of this housing and I will for sure test that for you so if you don't want to miss that video once again subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up of course uh, and ring the bell and never miss this and other upcoming videos and in the meantime watch my other videos see you there